Global Times, 3rd of October 2022, International Seminar Confirms Chinese Central Government's Authority Over the Dalai Lama's Reincarnation Through a side event of the 51st session of the UN Human Rights Council, during which the jurisdiction of the Chinese central government over the Dalai Lama's reincarnation was further reiterated, scholars in Tibetology from China and abroad shared studies. They discussed the fixed religious rituals and historical conventions of living Buddha reincarnation in Tibetan Buddhism. The international webinar on the religious rituals and historical customs of the reincarnation of living Buddhas was placed on Monday at the China Tibetology Research Center in Beijing from an offline location. Zheng Diyui, Senior Fellow and Director General at the China Tibetology Research Center CTRC, stated at the event in Beijing on Monday that the matters related to the reincarnation of the 14th Dalai Lama belong to the domestic affairs of Tibetan Buddhism in China, which must respect the wishes of the Chinese Tibetan Buddhist community and the majority of religious believers, and accept the management of the Chinese government. In his keynote address, he noted that this not only has substantial historical support but also complies with the provisions of the existing law, which cannot be disturbed by any separatist forces. During the event, ten specialists and academics from related fields gave speeches outlining the evolution of living Buddhas in Tibetan Buddhism, reincarnation ceremonies and historical practices, and the cynicization of Tibetan Buddhism. Set religious rites and traditional practices oversee a Tibetan Buddhist institution of succession, the reincarnation of living Buddhas. According to China's Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the Dalai Lama's institution of reincarnation has been around for several hundred years. Following religious rites and historical customs, the 14th Dalai Lama was located, recognized, and the then central government authorized his succession. The U.S. and other Western nations have exploited Shizong, Tibet, related affairs to accuse China of human rights and other concerns. Before the so-called Tibetan Policy and Support Act of 2020 blatantly meddled in China's domestic affairs, it was signed by Donald Trump, the U.S. president at the time. Azraza, the U.S.'s Under Secretary of State, was appointed Special Coordinator for Tibet in December 2021. The 14th Dalai Lama's rebirth has been talked up for political reasons by foreign Shizong independence groups and Western politicians, disregarding Buddhist tradition and hurting the faith. The Chinese central government and relevant local governments have never let up on their control over the living Buddha's rebirth. According to Zhang, the current Chinese central government upholds the historical practices of the reincarnation of living Buddhas, managing the social and public affairs of the reincarnation of living Buddhas while keeping an eye on standardized and regulated procedures based on pertinent laws. The rebirth of live Buddhas has been practiced in China for hundreds of years, according to Xiao Jia, deputy director at the Institute of Contemporary Studies of CTRC. It has long been recognized as a historical custom and religious rite, and Chinese laws and regulations support this. He considered it a massive distortion of the reincarnation of Tibetan Buddhist living Buddhas when certain nations claim that Tibetan Buddhism has become a world religion and see the Chinese government's handling of the reincarnation of living Buddhas as undermining the freedom of religious belief. The majority of Tibetan Buddhists practice in China, and given their accustomed surroundings, it is undoubtedly reasonable for them to look for and recognize the reincarnated living Buddha in this manner, which also reflects the Chinese government's concept of being. According to Wang Yansong, director of the Institute of Ethnology and Anthropology under the Chinese Academy of Social Sciences, managing the reincarnation affairs of the living Buddhas, such as the Dalai Lama and the Panchen Lama, is a social duty that the Chinese central government must carry out throughout history. According to Feng Sanping, a researcher from the Sichuan Tibetology Institute, the question of the Dalai Lama's reincarnation has never been a purely religious matter, nor the personal power of the Dalai Lama's in the past, 
but a significant political issue regarding the ownership of sovereignty. The Dalai Lama's reincarnation system has created a comprehensive set of religious rituals and historical traditions after hundreds of years of development and evolution, the essence of which is that the central government is the highest authority and has the highest decision-making power, Fang added. A member of the CPPCC National Committee and Vice President of the Buddhist Association of China's Shizong Branch, Jusen Kundhor, explained at the event how, after more than 1,300 years of development, Tibetan Buddhism has fully assimilated with the local natural geographical environment, humanities, and folk culture, all of which have Chinese cultural roots and characteristics. Jusen Kundhor, a returned Tibetan from Switzerland who also holds the position of Vice Chairman of the Shizong Autonomous Region of the Overseas Chinese, stated that the historical process has fully proven that the localization and cynicization of Tibetan Buddhism is an inevitable requirement for the survival and development of the religion itself. The reincarnation system of living Buddhas is one of the emblematic figures of the cynicization of Tibetan Buddhism, according to Sarbottam Shrestha, first vice president of the Arnico Society in Nepal, who made the statement at the ceremony. He claimed that a critical factor in the Chinese cynicization of Buddhism and other religions is how well they fit into a socialist society. In the webinar, Birgit Kellner, director of the Austrian Academy of Sciences Institute for the Cultural and Intellectual History of Asia, discussed the successes of the collaboration between Chinese and Austrian scholars in safeguarding Sanskrit literature from southwest China's Shizong Autonomous Region. She pointed out that the Sanskrit literature of Shizong has significant historical and cultural importance and that the Chinese government has prioritized preserving and studying them. She wants to keep in touch with her Chinese colleagues and advance the study of Sanskrit in academia.